Well, here we are again. Another instrument that I couldn't live without. Uh, this is another one that I just bought off eBay. Received today. It arrived early, which was uh, kind of nice. This is an HP 3335A synthesizer slash level generator. Uh, this instrument covers 200 hertz to 80 megahertz and uh, produces very precise, accurate uh, outputs. Um, initially, when I powered it up, it had a display issue. It was uh, at extra segments. So if I see what was it, the A, B, C, the D segments on the displays were lighting up uh, erratically, and uh, there was no output. Uh, so I popped the lid off. Uh, it had been uh, it had unadulterated Agilent uh, stickers on it, so it had been serviced. Uh, not too long ago, probably within the last 10 years. So I just opened it up. I popped the, uh, the CPU board out and uh, there, there, I uh, reseated uh, some of the ICs that were on it. And uh, there were a couple of switches on there for, uh, test and met or for, for testing purposes. So I cycled those a few times, reseated the board three times, powered it back on, and voila! The display issue went away, and I was able to get an output. Uh, but after all these years, uh, it's still fairly close on frequency. It's within about 30 millihertz of my counter over here. So, huh. uh, yeah, it's pretty clean. There's, there's just minor little scuffs on it, just like a lot of the other instruments that I've been able to purchase. And uh, this one's a fairly old unit. This one was uh, uh, from a 1976 design, so it's got a, a, uh, a pretty early serial number. But so far, it works just fine. I haven't uh, completely messed around with it yet. I'm still reading the manual, and uh, I'll do some sweep tests and so forth. So, but yeah, the HP 3335A. Just another instrument I didn't really need. Needed another hole in the head, basically, so but it works. So I guess I, I got my money's worth. Well, it's been a couple of days letting the oscillator uh, settle in. So I'm going to open it up and adjust it just a little bit. It was drifting just a little bit too fast. There's uh, really not much to look at. There's the uh, CPU board up front. I had some trouble with that. There's a couple of small switches here on the front on this board that were giving me trouble and gave me uh, kind of a scare a little bit. I thought the unit died on me, but I checked the power supply rails and everything was there. And so I fidgeted around with them uh, switches a little bit, clean and spray a little more contact cleaner, and it cleaned right up and now it's working like it's supposed to. Of course it says it's unlocked because I'm, I have the, uh, the local oscillator disconnected and I'm checking it on the scope. And it is pretty stable. It is drifting ever so slightly slow. But uh, trying to adjust these things, you know, it's you get them adjusted just right and they just over time they'll start loosening up and drifting one way or another. But anyhow, let me uh, close the lid on this thing and uh, I'll see if I can find a spot in the rack for it, and uh, we'll run it through some uh, through some paces. Okay, well, we're gonna do a little testing on the attenuator here. So right now we've got it set for 13 dB, and we're at 12.9798. Pretty impressive. Okay, let's go down to, uh, let's see, 10 dB. Oops, 10 dB. And yeah, that's pretty good there. Let's go down to, uh, oh, uh, 5 dB. Yeah, let's say that attenuator is pretty good. Okay, let's go to uh, 0 dB. Holy cow, yeah, that's pretty darn accurate. 
Okay, let's go to, uh, let's say, minus 10. Yeah, I would say that's pretty darn good, too. Okay, and I'm getting about to the limit of this thing. It's minus 30, so let's, let's go minus 30. It's uh, kind of trying to settle in, but maybe on the little edge here, I might have to recalibrate here. But, uh, let's do uh, minus 20. Yep, I think we're good. So, yeah, I think the, uh, the attenuator is working just fine. So, no apparent issues there. Okay, I figured I'd go over some basics on this thing. Uh, it's essentially just uh, works just like a normal signal generator. Uh, you have amplitude, and we've got uh, frequency. Right now, it's set for 10 megahertz. Um, so, and this thing's got uh, some pretty good coverage. We can go to uh, let's see, 200 hertz, and we can go up to 80 megahertz. So, it's got a fairly wide band, and it's. Uh, Pretty, it's as far as I can tell, level across the whole band. So I've checked it with my scope here, and uh, it's really, really level. So I'm assuming that the uh, the attenuator is working okay. That's the next thing I'm going to check later. But one of the things you can do with this is you can set up sweeps. And this one here is a little different on how you set it up. Uh, you enter basically your center frequency first, and then you enter the sweep width. So let's say we're going to do center frequency of 20 megahertz, and we're going to set our sweep width to 10 megahertz. I've already got it pushed in there, so we've got 10 megahertz. So now we hit uh, the uh, go to start frequency, and now we're down to uh, 15 megahertz. So what we can do now is press the start single sweep and it'll go all the way up until it hits 25 megahertz. And uh, you can do it in, uh, see this one here does it in 10 seconds, that one does it in 50 seconds. So we can go to 50 and it'll just run a little slower. But it seems to work all right. Uh, let's see. Let me uh, enter something else here. So let's enter uh, so clear. It's 10 megahertz. And let's do a sweep width of 5 megahertz. Go back to the start frequency. And uh, we'll press uh, start. And we can see the frequency increase. So yeah, it's uh, not bad. I think I might uh, find some, some use for this thing. Uh, it, it's still giving me some issues uh, with the display, but I think I finally got that fixed. It appears to be just a uh, oxidized connector between the, uh, the CPU board and the display board and back. So, it, so far it's working. But anyhow, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I have. And... Uh, so as I learn more about this thing, I uh, found all I did was just learn how to do the sweeps. But uh, it also has uh, uh, presets, so if I wanted to uh, store that preset, I could uh, press the numeral one and press store. And so now that setup is stored, and I can just uh, recall it. One, oops, let's say recall one. Or is it one recall? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, I'll figure it out eventually. But yeah, uh, for getting something that was just, you know, just advertised, just powered on. And uh, it's, it's I, I guess I got my money's worth. So we'll work out the little bugs that may crop up later. I may pick up a second unit as a parts unit just so that I have something to get parts from. And uh, yeah. we'll... Uh, get this thing settled into the rack. Let's see if we can also go 10 hertz. 10 million hertz. Alright. 
Oh, and uh, you can also adjust it manually with this, and you can go all the way out to millihertz level. Very nice. My, uh, I wish my uh, 3325A had this capability, but it doesn't. So I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, get something else like this. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. It's uh, getting late. I'm going to go to bed. It's been a long day. So, hey, thanks for watching, and I hope uh, this was at least worth something. Anyway, catch you later.